Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. Now, remind, let me remind you the, the normalization lemma, uh, what did we prove? We proved that if I have a finite type K algebra A, then I can find an elements there which are algebraically independent and this extension This extension is integral and this is the polynomial algebra because they are algebraically independent. So therefore just now what we have proved is dimension of this, this is a affine K algebra. dimension of A is equal to dimension of polynomial algebra in N varies. And now this integer N, this integer N is nothing but this N, the number of variables that also is nothing but the transcendent degree of the rational function field in n variables. So, I will recall little bit about transcendent degree. Okay, so, that is what I was saying that uh, this is one way to compute uh, dimension in case of affine algebra and uh, which is finite because we are dealing with finite type algebra, so you all that will know all these finitely many variables, polynomial rings and therefore it is finite. Okay, so let us recall some basic things about transcendent degree. So if I have a field extension L over K and subset S of L is called a transcendence basis of L over K, if two things, number one K is algebraically independent over k, uh, s is algebraically independent over k and second L is algebraic over k s, k round bracket s. This is the smallest subfield of L containing k and s or as a field it is generated over k by s. And then what proves that then one I will state it as a theorem. It says that if I have a field extension L over K, then one, there exists a transcendence basis. For L over K. And two, any two, transcendence basis of L over K have the same cardinality. And this common cardinality is called a transcendent degree of L over K the common cardinality the transcendence
डिग्री ऑफ ए लोअर की डिनोटेड बाय टी आर डेग एल सफी की दिस वन हैज ऑब्वियस प्रॉपर्टीज ओके बिफोर बिफोर आई गो ऑन टू द प्रॉपर्टीज वी शुड से सम एग्जाम्पल्स सी सम एग्जाम्पल्स एलो और की दाल जी ब्रेक इफ एंड ओनली ट्रांसेंडेंट डिग्री ऑफ एलो और की इज जीरो इनफैक्ट इन दिस केस एम टी सेट इज ए ट्रांसेंडेंट बेसिस यू डोंट नीड एनी एनी दैट सो सेकेंड If I have a rational function field, L is the rational function field. This is means the quotient of a quotient field of the polynomial algebra. Then obviously, x one to x n. is the transcendent basis so in this case the transcendent degree of k x1 to xn over k is n third if you have a field which is generated or uh, uh, generated or some uh, capital k by some elements x1 to xm then the transcendent degree is smaller equal to n equality holds if and only if this x1 to xm are algebraically independent okay uh this is one transcendent base but you can give another transcendent base also because you can simply take the powers suppose i take integers x1 power r1 xn power rn this is also transcendent base that's also easy to check so uh, uh re remember here this this uh, this um, proof of this theorem about transcendent basis and cardinalities are equal etc this goes similar to the uh, theorem where you prove every vector space has a basis and any two bases have the same cardinality whether finite or infinite same 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 ideas work here also the only difference uh, is very important difference usually in a vector space case you say that k is equal to l right here in the definition you might wonder why do i put the second condition like this and not l equal to k s it's one should think about it okay one more example which also will be used sometime later which i prepare here only so for if you take a polynomial ring in n variables and if you take what are called elementary symmetric polynomials in in these variables that simply means you take s1 which is sum of these variables s2 which is product two at a time that is x1 x2 x1 x3 and so on summation 
x i j and so on and s n is product of all s 3 is the product of three, uh, sum of the products of 3 at a time. So, these symmetric elementary these are called elementary symmetric polynomials in x 1 to x n they arose in in the study of equations mainly Galois Galois theory they arose because there is a relation between the roots and the coefficients of the polynomial and the roots these are the precisely the coefficients of the uh, polynomial right. So, uh, what what I want to say is this S 1 to S n this is a transcendence basis of the rational functions in n variable over k. There are also n in number. So, this is a different transcendence basis. Sometimes it is useful to work with this transcendence basis than the than the, the variables. Okay. So, with this I will I will uh, uh, for today's thing I will stop the consequences, but now I want to talk about the refined version of the normalization lemma. So, that is this is the refined version of Noether's normalization lemma. Uh, it was proved by Nagata in 66 in in the famous in his famous book local rings. It is published in around the same time. So, I will state for more ideals. So, if you have a a algebra k a is a k algebra of finite type over a field k and suppose I have a increasing sequence of ideals in a then there exist elements x 1 to x n such that 1 x 1 to x n are algebraically independent over k and second a is integral over x 1 to x n this is what we had in the classical version as well. But the third condition is now new. So, it says that for each one i 1 to r there exists a natural number h i such that when I contract this ideal a i to this polynomial algebra x 1 to x n it is generated by the variables x 1 to x h i. It could happen that h 1 equal to h 2 it could happen. So, they are just integers they are non decreasing ok. So, I will I will be little slow to prove this because otherwise it is too fast no. So, first I will prove this assertion to the polynomial algebra and then we will worry about finite type later. So, A is our polynomial algebra in y 1 to y n and I am going to prove these assertions by induction on n, n is the number of variables. If n equal to 0, there is nothing to prove because if n equal to 0 then A is a field and it is k and nothing to prove. So, I will assume n is positive and we can also assume that the last uh, the first ideal is non zero if it is zero then you just so once it is non zero i can choose a non zero element there call it x1 then x1 is not in the field because all we have considered the chain of proper ideals so the bigger ideal the last ideal is non unit ideal so earlier ideals also non unit ideals so this x1 cannot be in k because otherwise it will be a unit and hence by remember the lemma we have proved in the first uh, second lecture that if I have a polynomial in n variables then I can make a change of variables. So, that it becomes monic in one of the variable. So, I want to use that lemma. So, that will also show that I can find T 2 to T n. So, that think of this x x 1 as a polynomial 
and by changing the variables we have seen that that one is integral over the remaining one right. So, therefore, T 2 to T n there exists T 2 to T n such that this algebra A is integral over this algebra C which is generated by x 1 T 2 T n. So, here I recall the lemma for you. You have a lemma uh, the uh, either polynomial algebra n determinates x is an element in A, x is not a unit that is not a constant polynomial. Then you can find T 2 to T n such that this is integral over this. You remember what we did T i was y i minus y 1 power gamma i and we have chosen suitable gammas and then that ok. So, that was the uh, proof. So, I we found x x 1 so that this x is uh, a is integral over this ring uh, C x 1 uh, generated by x 1 t 2 and t n. Now, let us put a prime equal to a t 2 to t n and contract this chain of ideal given chain of ideals to this a prime. Then we get a chain some of them might become equal what does not matter and the last see all proper ideals. Therefore, by induction because now a prime is generated by lesser number of elements I can apply induction conclude that there exists x 2 to x n in a prime such that a prime is integral over uh, sub algebra generated by x 2 to x n x 1 x 2 to x n are algebraically independent and these contacted ideal to this b prime are generated by the variables that was the third condition in the proof. Now, you put b equal to b prime and x 1 generated by b prime algebra generated by x 1. So, we have a chain like this a containing uh, contains c and contains b these are integral extensions well, this is integral this is integral by because a prime is integral over b prime and this is just a base change because I have adjoined only in the x 1. So, these are integral extensions. So, therefore, composite is integral. So, that means a is integral over this. This proves 2. 2 is 2 is what integral and we still have to prove 1 that algebraically independence we still have to justify, but that is obvious again because you see x 1 to x n I want to show that they are algebraically independent. Now, look at the quotient fields quotient field of A is a rational function field in n variables, quotient field of B is rational functions in x 1 to x n and the transcendent degree of quotient field of A is n, but this is integral therefore, the transcendent degree will not change. So, it is n. So, that means they must be algebraically independent otherwise transcendent degree will be dropped right. So, we have proved 1 and 2 and now we want to just prove 3 that means the contractions are generated by x 1 to x h i. Now, x 1 we have chosen x 1 was chosen in a 1 the ideal a 1 and x 2 to x h i are in a i and I want to prove this actually equality here. So, one inclusion is obvious by the setup to prove the, the other inclusion I have to prove that every element which is here is also here. So, start with an element here f and write this f, f is in b. So, f is a polynomial in x 1 to x n. So, this polynomial I want to split into two parts the, the, the part first part is the one which involves x 1 and the other part is free from x 1. So, collect all the monomials which involve x 1 and the remaining one which is free from x 1 you put it in the other part. So, therefore, any f I can write it as x 1 times some polynomial in x 1 to x n plus some polynomial in x 2 to x n. Now, you see here x 1 was already in ideal a 1. So, it is in every ideal. So, this x 1 is there and by assumption f is there 
we started with f in this ideal x1 is already there and f is there therefore h is there so h of x2 to xn belong to this contraction ideal but this ideal is same as a prime ai prime b prime and by induction hypothesis this was generated by x2 to xhi so therefore h x2 to xn belongs to x2 hi because x1 is already there so this proves that f equal to x1 g plus h which belongs to this and we are done so that proves this refined version of normalization lemma for the polynomial case i would like to take a, a little bit gap here to to ask you if it was okay or shall i repeat some part sorry because you see it, it is always uh, better to have a description of ideal which is generated by the variables see instead of studying a uh, uh, ideals in a polynomial ring where you don't know what the generators the structure of the generators this way you can uh, actually deal with the ideal generated by variables which are more easier to deal with for calculation purpose also some of the earlier uh, observations also if you use a more general version it will become easier for example when we prove the dimensions are equal if i directly apply the third part to the ideals prime ideals then it will also tell you that dimensions are equal of course we, we use integral extensions etc but uh, this will also tell that proof uh, tell that the dimensions are equal okay so shall we continue this so now i have to prove that the general case the general case is not so difficult so general case means we are assuming now that we have proved the statements 1 to 3 for the polynomial case and we want to deduce it for arbitrary affine algebra so anyway any uh, every affine algebra there is a surjective map from the polynomial algebra to the given algebra and now given chain of ideals i am going to contract it so the chain of ideals were in a so i am going to pull it back to the the polynomial algebra so i will get a chain and also i will get one more ele- one more element in the chain the, the first one that namely the kernel because once i pull it back all of them will contain the kernel so kernel will be another uh, ideal here which i call it a not prime so the pull back chain now is a not prime contained in a1 prime contained in ar prime and now i apply the earlier case to this chain so that means we can find the variables x1 to xn algebraically independent so that a prime a prime is this one is integral over this element kx1 to xn and ai primes contracted to this is generated by this part of the variables and now i just have to push it remember here a0 prime this starts with 0 a0 prime contracted to this kx1 to xn is generated by x1 up to x h not and the a1 prime for example will contract it to h1 h1 is bigger equal to h not so it will be later than this right so therefore you just look at this commutative diagram a not prime is here this is y1 to yn this is a surjective map and then uh, all this are integral extensions this ideal is generated by h not here so when i go mod in this polynomial ring you start with h not plus 1 and so on this is just this this is generated by this and this this ring is uh, what we found and this is just pushing up this is just uh, uh, a is nothing but this quotient this this one is just nothing but this quotient this and you just pushed on the problem here and that is easy to check that 
this a i intersection b now b is this that is now the variable will start numbering from h 0 plus 1 etc there is no new idea in all here just just have to check 